So we're taking a look at a new lens from Sigma today, the new Sigma 50mm f1.2 DGDN art lens. This is a new lens in the art range. This is for Sony E-mount, I've got it, but it also comes for L-mount as well. And this is an f1.2 50mm lens. That's initially, I think, just always quite an exciting proposition. f1.2 is obviously very fast. It has massive advantages. You don't always have to shoot at f1.2. I wouldn't shoot every photo using this lens at f1.2. It's a very dreamy look, right? It's a really, really pleasing look, but it's not for every photo. But what it does allow you to do is have a lot of control over how much light you're letting in through the lens to your sensor and also have a lot of control over that depth of field, just how shallow would you like it to be? And on a 50 millimeter lens, I actually think it's incredibly useful because with 50 mil, I just feel like I've got a lot more room to move myself around to get different looks as well, to actually control the depth of field, as well as of course the aperture. Whereas on something like an 85 millimeter at f1.2, I feel like I'm starting to get a little bit too shallow sometimes, whereas on a 50 mil, I love it. Now, when I think of 50 millimeter f1.2, I tend to think of really big, bulbous lenses. And I was really surprised and very happy to see that's not really the case with this lens at all. In fact, for an f1.2 lens, this is remarkably just not that heavy, not that big. And that means it sits really nicely on the front of these nice little mirrorless cameras, right? So something like the Sony a7 IV, something like the Sony a7R5. I do like the feel of it. It's just very nice in the hands. The lens itself has got an aperture ring, which you can control the aperture there. You can have the click on or off, which is always useful for an aperture ring like that. I love to see that on a prime lens, always a big fan. And then you've got a nice big manual focus ring as well, which is nicely weighted. That's always pleasing, I think, especially if you want to shoot something a little bit different with something like this you know if you're going out doing low light stuff including maybe even star photography you absolutely might want to use that manual focus ring it's always nice to have that nicely weighted and a good size on there as well otherwise controls on here are pretty straightforward you've got the af mf switch the click on or off like i mentioned before and then we've got a custom function button as well which will generally be set to focus hold which is useful i think for a lens of this type. Now, I've shot a little bit of a variety of stuff with this lens. There's lots that you can do with a lens like this. Like I mentioned before, this is gonna be fantastic for low light situations, but obviously portraiture is gonna be a big thing as well. Whether that is kind of in a studio, whether that's a full studio with lighting and backdrops and all the stuff, whether it's a home studio, maybe you've got one light, or whether it's out and about, you've got a lot of control over the style of photo you go for, the style of portrait, how much you include kind of in the background, both in terms of the depth of field, a 50 millimeter allows you to really push in or actually pull away. You've got a lot of control over what you wanna do. It's an incredible all round a prime lens absolutely for portraiture but actually for loads of stuff you know we've talked in the past about all the different things you can do with a 50 millimeter lens like this and there's a lot and perhaps unsurprisingly considering this is a sigma art lens which are i think at this point very much known to be lovely lenses the image quality is really lovely even shooting wide open at f1.2 it's nice and sharp. You're obviously getting a very shallow depth of field in that situation. And the bokeh, I think, looks fantastic. Now, I've tried this out in a couple of different situations. Lights behind, lights kind of to the side, just because I want to see, you know, sometimes you get bokeh that can feel a little bit messy, right? Not ideal. Whereas this actually seems very smooth, very kind of dreamlike, which is exactly what you want, I think, from a lens like this. Then stopping down, you've got lovely detail in the shot. You've got great contrast as well, I think, and the great color reproduction through the lens. It's about a four 40 centimeter close focusing distance, which is not super close at all, but it's probably roughly what you might expect on a lens like this. That didn't really cause me any issues. Getting closer than that does start to get, you know, it does start to get pretty close, especially shooting wide open. That almost starts to get a little bit silly. So I don't think that's a problem at all. But you are going to be able to capture some beautiful images with a lens like this, but also without it feeling overwhelmingly huge and heavy on the front of your camera. I never felt like the whole system was front heavy, which I have felt on other 50 millimeter f1.2 lenses, which are just, it's part of the deal, I suppose. They tend to just be very big and obviously quite heavy as well with the glass inside. But Sigma have done a great job of keeping this pretty small and lightweight. Now we've obviously seen the Sigma 50 mil f1.4 art lens as well, which I really, really liked. I really enjoyed using that. That's a lovely lens. F1.2 is not something you're gonna need to use well, needs a strong word, right? You don't need 
f1.2 but it does afford you some options right for how you want to actually take your photos or whether it's video as well and certainly in low light you are going to notice the difference right with the amount of light coming in you are going to notice the difference if you like taking those incredibly dream like almost ethereal style portraits then you're absolutely going to have a great time with a lens like this if you do shoot a lot in low light you know i could imagine taking this to events where the lighting is not perhaps ideal and you're going to be able to get a lot of mileage out of shooting those nice, fast apertures. I think you're still going to get a lot of mileage out of the 50mm f1.4 lens. I think the reality is that both offer that great versatility. But if you are looking for that pretty much fastest 50mm lens that you're going to get within this ecosystem, this is a great option just because of the size and the weight. It makes it hard not to recommend this as a third party option because there's so much it's going to be able to do and you're getting that Sigma art quality to your images, which I think is which I think is really important. Now you can check out the full specs of this lens, the pricing, all that fun stuff by checking out the link down in the description. That's all down there, all the fun stuff, everything you want to know that we haven't discussed in this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well because there's new stuff all the time time, new reviews, new tutorials, loads of stuff. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.